Here we are in October 2013, early October, and within the last two weeks, John Davies, writing for the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, reports that we will lose habitat for most humans on, on Earth by 2040. Also within the last week, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's fifth assessment came out in which the IPCC recommends geoengineering because otherwise we've triggered runaway greenhouse. So it appears that we have in fact triggered runaway greenhouse event. Neither of those assessments take into account the 25 self-reinforcing feedback loops we've triggered on the climate front. 23 of those appear to be irreversible at temporal spans relevant to humanity. We triggered one of those in 2010 when it was reported in Science in March that methane was leaking out of the Arctic Ocean. We triggered four more as reported in the refereed journal literature in 2011. We triggered six more in 2012 and a full dozen so far in 2013. Tack on one each in 2012 and 2013 reversible feedback loops. The first of those in August 2012 when the Obama administration approved drilling for, for gas and oil in the Arctic. And then earlier this year when we have super tankers pushing through the slushy Arctic to save a few dollars in shipping routes through the vaunted Northwest Passage. At this point, it seems that civilization, that industrial civilization, is a trap. Other civilizations have been able to collapse, and we've been able to walk away from that. And in, in a few cases, at least, the survivors have returned and have returned to a hunter-gatherer existence. However, we can't do that now because we have these many, many nuclear power plants throughout the world. Civilization collapses now in the less than 20 years or so it takes to decommission and power those power plants. We've triggered runaway ionizing radiation. If we don't stop civilization, we've triggered runaway greenhouse. In fact, we've already triggered runaway greenhouse. Either way, we're headed for near-term human extinction. How to live with this information, how to process this information, how to proceed in, this inform in light of this information. Well, as Mike Tyson pointed out, the boxer, not the philosopher, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. We've been punched in the face now. We have, we have a limited time on this planet, and in fact, we've always had a limited time on this planet. Let's act like that. Like to, let's act as if we're in hospice, as if everybody is in hospice, as if the in, entire living planet is in hospice. And when, when I see how people act when they're in hospice, when they've been given weeks or months to end, I never see people acting as if they need the last dime, as if they need to, to, to make a little bit more money as the world burns. What I see instead is people pursuing a life of excellence, pursuing what they love, acting with compassion and courage and creativity, and giving things away acting as if we live in a gift economy. Let's do that. Let's do all of that. Pursuing a life of excellence, pursuing what we love, acting as if we're in hospice, acting as if we're decent human beings that we're capable of acting. Let's, let's pursue what we love. Let's act as if our insignificant lives matter to those around us. And I'm not suggesting we abandon action, that we just roll over and die. What I'm suggesting in addition to all that is that action is the antidote to despair, as Edward Abbey pointed out many years ago. So let's act.